Hello, Kieran from GMR Spares here and you join me at my workbench for a very special occasion which is introducing the BC Bender. The BC Bender is a point-to-point -point hand wired fuzz pedal in the old fashioned style it's available here fully made or it's available as a kit from the GMR Spares store. There are a few ways that the BC Bender differs from most other point-to-point -point hand wired pedals. Most point-to-point -point hand wired pedals use this stuff. This is called tag board. It's made out of phenolic with these metal tags on them. But it's actually quite big. It's actually designed for use in amplifiers and larger test equipment. Here at GMR Spares we make our own tag board which is actually takes influence from the way that Leo Fender made guitar pickups and PCBs in the 60s and it's obviously it's a lot smaller if we look here it fits nicely into that pedal whereas the old style we're limited in space we can't fit a lot of other things in apart from that one surprising thing about the new tag board that we make here at GMR Spares is that believe it or not it actually sounds a little bit better the old style tag board is a lot more brittle and actually picks up microphonic vibration a lot easier than the vulcanized fiber board does. That means that the vulcanized fiber board has a lot more body to the tone when you're using it as a fuzz pedal. The BC Bender uses silicon transistors rather than germanium transistors. Now there's a lot of myths going around on the internet and forums and people talking to each other that say that germanium transistors sound so much better than silicon transistors, which is in effect wrong. One of the benefits for using silicon transistors is that they still make silicon transistors. Germanium transistors you have to buy new old stock which means the quality of them varies wildly depending on how people have stored them, whether they've been used before, whereas with the silicon transistors they're new from the factory, you know they're gonna work. Another great thing about silicon transistors is that they have a lot more gain than germanium transistors which means we have access to a lot more fuzzy tones than we would on a germanium fuzz pedal. We can actually turn down the fuzz and get the same sounds that we get from a germanium pedal but we're using the silicon transistors. But what we can also do is turn up the fuzz and get really crazy insane sounds. Because the BC Bender is based on a late 60s, early 70s fuzz design, it's actually based on the Vox Tone Bender, which for Tone Bender aficionados would make it the, the Mark 1.5. It's actually the circuit that the fuzz face was based upon. I tried to keep everything as vintage correct as I could whilst keeping the good bits about modern pedal design. Everything from Sound City amps to colour sound pedals all use these types of knobs, what we now call Marshall style knobs. Even the case is an Ediston design case made by Hammond. Ediston were a company in the UK based in Birmingham that made cases like this. All the circuitry inside the pedal is all point to point hand wired that means there's no PCBs everything's joined from one component to the other some of the modern features we're using in this pedal which pedal manufacturers of the 60s and 70s wouldn't have used is these smaller cases pedals like the fuzz face and the tone bender and the big muff all take up great big chunks of the pedal board using the BC bender that's not a problem you get all that brilliant vintage sound the vintage way of doing things, it's just made smaller so you can fit more pedals on your board. Another modern thing that we've added to the pedal is an LED indicator to tell us whether the pedal is on or off. And the last modern feature is that the BC Bender works on a 9 volt power supply. Now one rumour floating around the internet about fuzz pedals is that they sound better on batteries, which I would actually agree with if the pedal is as stuck. The BC Bender actually has battery emulation in it because the difference between using a battery and using a power supply is not any kind of mojo, any weird chemical device, any little magic particles inside the, the battery that add loads of mojo, tone, brilliantness. It's just the fact that when you put a battery into a pedal, the volts it gives out are less than 9 volts. A power supply gives you just over 9 volts no matter what you do. So if we add some circuitry in here to lower the voltage, we actually get the sound of a battery from a power supply. The first tonal example I'm going to give you 
uses a crunchy sound on your amp and it uses the attack control on the pedal down to about 9 o'clock and the level control at about 12 o'clock and this gives you a brilliant cream era Eric Clapton kind of sound <laughs> The next example I'm going to show you, I would usually attribute to someone like Black Sabbath. It's a big woolly sound with fizzy top end on it. But in the interest of trying to get young people involved in making pedals, modding pedals, I'm going to use a modern example and say it's the sound that Tame Impala get on Elephant. I'm using a clean signal on the amp, which you'll hear in the bypass mode, and then switching on the pedal with the controls both at 12 o'clock. One of the most famous uses of a tone bender style pedal was actually Jeff Beck in the Yardbirds. He used a tone bender Mark I, which were actually made in wooden boxes at the time. Because we have the higher gain from the silicon transistors, we can emulate that sound and get a really close Yardbirds kind of tone. And here are some examples. Just using the volume control on my guitar and the pickup selector, how I can get Jeff Beck in the Yardbird style tones. Myth number three about old style fuzz pedals is that silicon transistors in the pedal, when you turn down the volume on a guitar, they don't clean up as well as germanium transistors do. For me, that's a little bit of rubbish. I think what they're talking about is in certain designs of fuzz pedal, that can be the case. In terms of the BC bender, it does a really good job of cleaning up the sound using your volume control. So in this example, the attack is gonna be all the way to the top and the level control is going to be just under 10 o'clock. We're going to start off with the clean sound with the volume on my guitar turned down and as we go through the example we're going to be turning up the volume and turning it down for cleans. <laughs>
This next example is a really good example of how you can use a fuzz pedal in a way that you wouldn't think you would use a fuzz pedal. A lot of people in the 70s and 60s wouldn't ever turn off the fuzz pedal when they were playing. It would just be on all the time and they would use the fuzz pedal like we use the gain channel on an amplifier using the volume control to get clean sounds, turn the volume control up to get lead sounds and more driven sounds. A classic example of using a fuzz pedal but with a clean sound with your volume turned down is The Wind Cries Mary by Jimi Hendrix. You get a lot of warmth and you get just that tiny little bit of saturation on the top which just makes it sound beautiful. Now by turning up your guitar slightly, not changing any of the controls on the pedal, we get that kind of more driven Jimi Hendrix sound into when we turn up the volume again, a big fuzzy lead sound. This last example is a really good example for people who don't like using volume controls on guitars. You can get a really brilliant, fuzzy, saturated, warm sound that's just on the edge of going a little bit mental. And a brilliant example of that kind of tone is Iggy and the Stooges.